Hey everyone, welcome back to Kali Plants. It's me again, Mark, and today we're back with another video. And for this one, we're gonna take a look at our all of our hanging plants, all of our hanging succulents. So you can see here all the setup that I made, and they're looking kind of lush for, by now. Okay, but I still have some work to do on them. But still, I wanted to share them with you. All these wonderful hanging varieties. So I have some on the uh, tables that we have here because they're not yet set up on our hanging plants okay because i only have a limited amount of plants to hang to that but we're gonna take a look at all the varieties of succulents that you can use as hanging plants on your garden on your greenhouse so that you will have these jungle vibes in your area okay so here they are here are all the plants that you can use as hanging as plants hanging succulents and there's my coffee over there and we have our hanging um, walls okay hanging gardens here at the sides okay so I actually set those up for hanging plants when it, when the greenhouse was being built I actually intended the uh, far side to be uh, you know a hanging place for hanging plants and it wasn't filled back then but now it's getting more filled and yeah probably I will do more of this in some other areas in the house so we will get to see more of hanging succulents later on but now let's look at the options that we have and let's just go with the ones that are not very you know popular with the people okay uh, so let's, let's just go over this quickly this is our um, monkey tail cactus okay you can see here this is a Kleisto, ah no, not Kleisto cactus. I will just be posting the name on the screen because I totally forgot the exact name but it has some cola de mononis on it. So this is actually a monkey tail and you can see here all the fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy uh, texture that it has, all those fuzz that it produces instead of spines. But sometimes these fuzz can get, can prick you if you rub them the wrong way because they're still kind of prickly enough okay but if you rub them like down there down here in this direction it doesn't hurt you that much and you can see here all the whitish color that it has it really reminds you of a tail of a cat or of a monkey and really nice it's been really behaved with me i don't have a lot of issues with it it's it hasn't shrunk a lot and it actually got longer since it was here i think it was about this tall this long and then it grew like that Okay, so the potting mix that I used on it had a lot of pummies, but yeah, I think I'm thinking about replacing the potting mix on that one. That is a really wonderful um, tail like cactus. You can add to your collection. I would recommend you get one that is not um, grafted. This is grafted to our um, blue boy cactus. Okay, next one is we have this red rat tail cactus. This is also a hanging type cactus. You can see here the the stems it has is really prickly if you manage to get a look on there it's really prickly okay it has that fuzz as well but it's not as soft as the monkey tail cactus okay so i don't know why it's not focusing okay but you can see there it's really prickly and it has some long spines okay so that is also one that you can add to your hanging uh, collection just make sure that you don't put it anywhere that kids will touch it because it's a really spiny one but i really like the uh, concept of hanging cacti because you don't often see these ones on other growers okay i have two more here this is an echinopsis okay this is a um, peanut cactus okay i also know that some peanut cactus like this one okay they have a ten tendency to hang and I, actually i have a friend of mine which is also a grower that has a lot of these but they're etiolated so if you want these uh, peanut cactus to grow compact and to grow much more rounder instead of longer then you can give them more sun right here on my hanging area they get maximum sunlight so they're looking kind of compact but i'm still gonna make them grow a little more when I planted this, I was still experimenting with my potty mix. So you can see here, there has, there's a lot of pumice on there. So it hasn't grown much, but I'm thinking of changing that. Okay, we also have here our golden rat tail. I think this is related to the red, red rat tail or something like that. But this one has one stem that is beheaded, chopped off, and then the, those other stems came off out of that one stem. So we have a clump right there. 
So I'm thinking of doing the same with the um, monkey tail cactus that we have here. I'm thinking of rerouting this one. Okay, I will probably cut it and then I will reroute it. And then where it's rooted, I will chop it off again so that we can get clumps. So with this length, I think I will make um, one, two, three, three chops of that so that we can propagate it. Please uh, give me some ideas if you have experience on propagating this cactus. Okay, let's move on to the next genus. Now, the lesser favorite ones. And these are the Sinicio. This is our um, Sinicio oh, string of watermelon, I believe. Okay, so there's that. This used to be two strands, which have gotten very long, but the strands right here broke off. So I actually gave off that strand and Hopefully they are able to reroute it to my buyer and then we have some other offshoots right here at the top And you can see it's kind of shrunken but I just need to water it once and then it will plump up back up and it has some nice texture to the leaves or nice pattern you can see there are, there are stripes on there and if it's plump it's really evident it's really prominent the stripes on those leaves really beautiful um, tiny hanging succulent that would really look nicely if I manage to grow a lot more strands out of that. Okay, we have also our string of pearls and string of tears. So, some people say that they are the same and I think they are the same in a lot of ways. But the tears one has some point to them. So, I don't know if that's a hybrid or that's a variation to the round one. But you can see here, they are treated the same. I watered them at the same time. But the ones on the left have some point to the leaves and this one on the left i find that it flowers a lot more often than this one and yeah they're still planted in a pomisevi potty mix which is why they haven't grown but i'm planning to replace that potty mix you can see here a lot of my succulents which are planted in a lot of pomis um, i still have to repot them and yeah i'm actually uh, short on time on planting them up right away so yeah so they're just gonna wait until I have some enough time and then I can repot them. Let's go on to the next genus and these are the, okay, you can see here, these are the stinkies. Okay, so we have here probably an Orbea. Okay, I'm not sure about these other two, I forgot, but I will be posting the name soon. Okay, so you can see we have three varieties here. They look kind of spiny, but they are not sharp at all. You can touch them. Okay, even this one, you can touch it and it doesn't hurt. So that is a nice alternative if you don't like spiny cacti. But these are not cacti, these are succulents. And you can see here the way they grow is they produce these um, stems that will sometimes trail downwards. So it just fell off. Okay, so yeah, it, it might snap off like that sometime, okay. This is the flower by the way. So you don't want to touch it a lot because sometimes it will broke off like that. So we'll just propagate that later. But if you let them be and if you don't touch them a lot and if they manage to produce a nice big clump and they're put on a hanging pot, they will just trail downwards with their stems. Okay, so just don't touch them that much because they will be snapping off. The same goes with this one. Okay, you can see here it also it already has a hanging habit. And what I do if a stem broke broke breaks off, I will just plop it back onto the soil. And you can see this one. This is a stem that has broken off. I just plopped it back in there and it's rooting uh, already. Okay, I didn't have to bury it. It will just produce roots right at the side of its stems and it will attach to the soil. Okay, so that's the same with that one. Okay, for these three, the one with the most beautiful blooms currently in my care is this one. Usually the more textured the plant is, the lesser showy the flowers are. So this one, because they look kind of plain, they have some really nice looking flowers with those red lips. Really, really nice color. Okay, there's, there's a lot of varieties of that really. And yeah, you can collect them because they're really beautiful. Okay, on to the next, and these are the Portulacarias. These are also another type of hanging uh, succulent, and you can also grow this as a bonsai. So you might want to chop it off if you want to keep it small, keep it shrubby looking, but you can also let it grow, let it go, and then it will become a hanging plant. You can put this up on a hanging pot, 
and the stems are flexible enough I believe if they get long enough they will start trailing downwards so this one hasn't grown that much for me yet this one hasn't trailed downwards but I believe that in a few times it will just trail downwards this is also a nice alternative if you want to grow those Calicia repens or those pink lady turtle vine because those plants tend to get thirsty very quickly so I find that I would be better off using this plant instead because this one doesn't get very quickly uh, very thirsty very fast so it will still be able to hold on to some water before it gets thirsty again so I don't have to rush watering this one because I believe with a turtle vine it's really a very thirsty succulent you have to water it all the time okay but for this one the portolacayas you can get away with watering them along with your other succulents especially once they're full in size but if they're still small you might want to water them more often so that they can root and they can grow okay but once they grow they really just grow a lot this was bought late last year and you can see here all the growth that it has i bought this it was like these two stems okay with some other branches but now it has gotten to this look so it's gotten really straggly but i'm letting it grow so that i can propagate some of the stems and we can sell them later on give them away okay we just have some caterpillars there let me just take those off caterpillars or higad in the philippines you definitely don't want any caterpillars on your succulents they will eat the leaves really and you will just wake up to them and your leaves are gone okay the next uh, genus that we're going to be looking at are the crassulas i have three crassulas here okay, but i believe there are even more crassulas that you can use as hanging plants there is also the calico kittens but i don't have that okay we have this one this is a crassula capitella okay you can see here this one has nice texture nice pattern to its leaves kind of reminds you of the crassula camphor they're actually related very related the camphor i believe is also capitella but it is a different form this one doesn't turn red but you can see here it's a nice clumping succulent i will find that this one this is right here huh? you can see so this one tends to get thirsty very often so i will water this more more than usual compared to my other succulents this is the Crassula David. Um, I forgot the name. I will just be posting it on the screen. But the sellers often call this the David, and you can see it has some nice um, texture to the leaves, nice pattern, and it's also kind of fuzzy. So I really, really like this one, and I believe this is a really tight clumping succulent. Once you manage to let it um, hang onto the side, it will produce like a carpet. So it doesn't produce straggly growth. It doesn't have a lot of st stems. It will just produce clumps of these nice rounded leaves. And I really like that about this succulent. Okay, so we have that. Now on to the next. This is Crassula volkensii. Um, there is also a non-variegated version of this which is kind of green red in color but this is the variegated version you can see here it has some nice white yellow and green colors on its leaves really beautiful and it has that bouncy bouncy uh, motion to it once you touch it and i really like it and i'm actually planning to put this up on a hanging pot so that i can put it up on the hanging wall that we have there along with my other uh, other hanging succulents but this one is I would say really really nice really really adorable and such an underrated succulent because not a lot of people likes these plants likes these crassulas sometimes they will think that um, they're very fickle they're very sensitive they're actually much more needy when it comes to watering compared with your other succulents so you will have to be more thoughtful of watering on these plants compared with these thicker leaved ones because you can see here they're very small they're very dainty they're very um, delicate so you don't want to leave them dry for very long because they will desiccate okay but um, they will not need to be uh, they will have to be watered more often than your other thicker succulents so that's just a tip that i'll be giving if you like to grow grassless so now let's go on to another special mention this is not a this one doesn't belong to a particular genus but you can say that this is a sedum hybrid Okay, we're gonna go on to our sedums now. And this is a criminal sedum, if I'm not mistaken, little gem. This is a hybrid of a sedum. And you can see here, 
the hanging capability that it has once you let it trail down on a spot okay you can see that i think if this gets too long i will just put it up on a hanging pot and we can let it ride and what's uh, different about this one it produces flower stalks that resemble rosettes at the beginning so you can see here this used to be a rosette but then it will become a flower stalk so that is kind of uh, reminiscent of our orostakis dancing dance cap dance cap succulent the orostakis they do flowers flowers on the rosettes so this all of these rosettes can become flowers later on but they will just produce clumps readily so you will not have to worry about losing your plant because they will just produce other rosettes as well and i i'm fine that this one is also kind of thirsty you can see here on its leaves okay right there they will get kind of wrinkly like that if they're thirsty so you will have to be mindful of watering this plant because i used to neglect one of these and it just lost a lot of leaf, leaves and that one sadly died because of neglect so you don't want to neglect this as much as your other succulents it will tend to get very thirsty very quickly so you have to be mindful of growing this little gem but i really love the rose heads on that really tiny really delicate looking rosettes okay on to the next we are gonna go to our sedums right now and let's just go on to the hanging uh, plants that we have here this one i featured recently is a sedum organianum and you can see it has the pointed leaves compared with the round leaf version that we have here okay but they have the same color and i think they have the same flowers but this one tends to grow a little on the larger side and this one on the more smaller side you can see here they're both very very beautiful and i like the lush look on this one this one um is a newly bought succulent if you haven't checked out our, our recent unboxing it is newly bought and that's just the size that it came in and i was actually surprised that it came in as a large one it's not rooted in yet but i have it planted already you can see here this one is a much more older succulent i still have to replace the potting mix on that that has a lot of pummies okay but you can see here all the pups that it has grown so it's ready to produce like a large uh, batch of stems as well okay so yeah these two are the staples that you would really want to collect if you're planning to grow a succulent hanging garden because they're the ones that are true hanging types they will not just they are they, they really grow that way that's just their growth growth habit compared with your other sedums which might have an upright habit that will trail if it gets too long but this one is a really trailing succulent it doesn't stay upright for very long so those are the sedums that you would like to collect also the special one that uh, i haven't mentioned yet this is a sedum craigii a lot of sellers are already selling this as well but this is not as readily available compared with your other sedums you can see it doesn't produce a nice rosette or it doesn't produce that rosette appearance but the leaves still grow in a rosette manner okay it kind of reminds you of a pacifitum really and you can see here all the pups that it has okay really nice growth on that reminds you of a pacifitum okay so we have that now let's go on to our next uh, sedums i have some other sedums right here you can use these also as hanging plants though they are not really hanging in their growth this is sedum adolfi this is sedum adolfi um uh, i forgot the name okay but this is one that has red edges okay but this is also the same sedum adolfi really okay just some dried leaves right here so the difference with this one is that it produces longer uh, narrower stems thinner stems compared with the sedum adolfi which can get thick stems if you let it grow really well okay and you can see here all the nice color that it has produced in my care this is grown in a rain or shine location so they get this really nice vibrant orangey colors really really nice i love the look on this sedum adolfi and this is the common one this is not a different variety so you can just buy a common adolfi and you can just let it grow in a rain or shine location really nice we also have this um sedeveria harry butterfield if i'm not mistaken this is the super donkey tail this is a hybrid of the na narrow or the pointed leaf sedum organianum crossed with an echeveria of some type so this is actually an echeveria hybrid and you can see that as it starts to grow it will stay upright but then it will hang once it gets long enough 
So these two are the heads that I had before. And once they got too long, I cut them off. And these are the stems that they left. And these are all the pups that they produce on their old stems. So that's a really, really nice lush looking pot of sedum outside the very uh, Harry Butterfield. Okay, they're just kind of pointy. Okay, they might feel sharp. Though they will not damage you a lot, but they are very pointy. And they're also sensitive to overwatering. Same with the sedum organianum that we have. Because I believe that this one is very sensitive to overwatering. It will just drop leaves readily compared with the other sedums that we have. This is a more delicate sedum. And it's getting really, really, really bright already. And this is another nice hanging succulent that you can use. This is Cotyledon pendens. And usually if a plant has a pendens name, that usually means that the plant is hanging or trailing in its growth. Because this one is called pendens, so you can see here, it has that nice growth. This used to be planted in a pumice heavy potting mix, which is why the leaves have gotten much more plump. But if you plant it in a very organic, heavy potting mix, the leaves will be much more thinner and then the stems will be thinner and it will be much more trailing compared to what with, uh, with what I have here, which is very compact. So you can grow these really chubby leaves and really nice whitish color on them if you give it maximum amounts of sunlight and infrequent watering. Don't water it a lot because if you water it a lot, it will have smaller leaves and much more a straggly look. It will be much more etiolated and you wouldn't want that look on your plants. Now let's uh, move on to our Graptopetalums. Okay, you can see here all the Graptopetalums that we have. Um, I have a Graptosidum here but it's not fully grown yet. This is Ghosty. These are my Ghosty Propagates. Okay, you can see here. Ghosty here. Ghosty here. Ghosties are very nice compact succulents compared with the ghost plant because the ghosty is much more smaller in size and it has a lot of farina. And with the ghost plant, um, you will have this large, very large growth with just a touch of farina. It's not farina heavy, so you don't see a lot of powder on those leaves. So if you want an alternative to the ghost plant, you can use the ghosty. And I, I think actually the ghosty was designed to replace the ghost plant. But the ghost tea will tend to trail once it gets long enough. So if it's not long enough yet, it will not trail that much. So the ghost plant is a readily trailing succulent. If it gets too long, if it gets too tall, it will just trail. You can see the stems it has right here. Okay, so I'm letting it trail right like on this pot. Um, I gave it rain or shine treatment here. And usually if you look at the pictures of this plant online, you will find that there are balconies that are just filled with these plants, with these ghost plants. They can fill up a balcony uh, because they get very long. They can hang downwards on your balcony, on your terraces. So that they look really, really nice once you manage to let them grow long and large. So I'm planning actually to make a longer or I'm planning to find a longer pot for use on hanging gardens because that is just a single square pot but you can also buy a longer one so kind of similar to the succulent gutters that Miss Laura Eubanks uses on her projects so I kind of like that look I might be able to buy a longer pot and we can utilize this plant on a longer pot because I think it will need a bigger to support its larger size okay now onto our other Graptopetalums here, we have our Macdugali or Macdugalii and this is a small clumping succulent. I actually prefer this more than the Echeveria prolifica. I'm not, um, I, I actually don't have a lot of experience with the prolifica because that plant when I had it, it was very sensitive and it readily, very easily dropped off its leaves, very easily gets overwatered and it's desiccated already when I had it. It was desiccating already and I didn't like the look of it anymore so I just neglected it and it died. But this one, the Macdugali, I think it's much more resilient and it also has that nice um, rosette on it and it's a clumping succulent and you can let it hang. It will just produce some flower stalks from time to time so we'll have to deadhead them because that is a dyed, dyed up flower stalk. Recently, it produced a lot of flowers and I just took those flowers off. This is still a flower stalk that will be opening 
so yeah so that is a really nice really nice succulent even though it produces flower stalks you will not lose the ro uh, rosettes on that on the heads because the head the flower stalks doesn't grow on the heads the flower stalks are separate to the heads of the plant so that is Graptopetalum macdogalii. We also have our Mendoza right here. Okay, this is already a large clump. This is grown outside on my rain or shine location. And you can see here it's really, really beautiful. With the rain or shine treatment that giving it, um, I think this one has gotten much more delicate. I don't touch it very much because I, touch, I touched it once and the leaves just dropped off. So that might happen to you. If you're getting a lot of rain, you might want to um, avoid touching your rain or shine succulents because they will be much more prone to dropping leaves if you touch them and it's raining because they will usually be filled with water at that time but if you still drop a few leaves okay I think I have the leaf right here okay it will still propagate very easily if the leaf is healthy okay so we have that we have our mirine here this is already added to our hanging uh, garden I hope you can see that clearly okay really really nice clumping succulent okay this used to be potted up but i was intending to put it on a hanging pot so i have one that i added it here okay really really nice color on that okay it adds another texture to our hanging gardens and i'm hoping that it will just trail later on yeah so there's that i hope that you can see it well okay now let's go on to our other Graptopetalums. Okay, for just another info, okay, just another tip. This is also the Mirine. This is the same, but this one has much more rounder leaves. So this will happen if you water less often, okay? And it will have much brighter look on it, much brighter farina as well. So that will happen if you give it less frequent watering. But if you water more often, you will get a different look to your Mirine. So actually currently here in my place I'm I'm giving this less frequent watering right now so I'm training it to be much more chubbier okay now we also have our Ellen which is a really really nice plant okay the reset on that one is ruined I think I bumped onto it or something bumped onto it and it just dropped off so we have this nice purplish pinkish succulent with more sun and with more stress probably under grow lights you can give it more light and it will turn very pinkish in look but with the light that i have here it's kind of protected inside the greenhouse so it has some purplish look but i'm hoping to let it grow and then i will be putting it outside as well with my other rain or shine succulents probably it will turn pink there it's a really nice uh, farina heavy farina thick succulent it doesn't have that rosette of the Mendoza, okay, which have this much more out there rosette. This one is very, I don't know, it produces larger rosettes actually, but it's not as compact as the other one. Okay, this one is more of a wider grower. Kind of reminds me of the Super Bomb and the Amethystinum because that's how those Graptopetalums grow. They don't grow in a tight, compact rosettes. They will just produce leaves that are round and they will have these large rosettes that are not compact. Okay, but you can see here really nice chubby leaves on that one. And I easily know if it's thirsty, if it's no longer shiny, and if the bottom leaves produce a cup shape. Okay, those bottom leaves right there. If they produce a cup shape, that means that the plant is thirsty. So that's when I water. I'm very careful that not to overwater this one because I believe that this is very delicate when it comes to overwatering it will just drop leaves and you will ruin your Ellen if you overwater it so yeah you have to be very mindful of that okay so I think that's about all the hanging succulents that we have you can see here really nice look on the edge on the far end of my greenhouse when I come here that's what that's the look that welcomes me here in the greenhouse so now if you have any other succulents that you know will do well also on a hanging uh, type of situation on a hanging garden please make sure to comment down below so that our viewers will have an idea on what other succulents they can use on their hanging gardens and if you really like the plants that i showed to you please make sure to hit the thumbs up it really helps out the channel and please subscribe if you haven't already if you have any other topics that you want us to talk about comment down below on the comment section and i think that's about it for this video guys I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.